Everyone, this is Three Questions with Stephanie Rothstein. I'm really pumped, Stephanie, because we actually, you are on the podcast before. We've actually kind of become really good friends, right? Oh, the fact that you say that. Yes, we have. Stop yes, it. we have. Stop it. No, and okay. we, uh, we had great conversation, and uh, I'm really excited to have you on today because uh, I knew that, I know maybe I shouldn't say, I didn't know this before anyone else knew this, but you announced formally that you became assistant principal. Yeah. Little sound. Thank you. Yeah. So congratulations. And uh, we're going to do the three questions, but I, I asked Stephanie before, because um, I know there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that are like, you know, um, in certain parts of their career and they might want to aspire to go into administration. So can you just kind of talk like, you know, you were doing uh, like a, is a TOSA. I can't remember what that stands for. I know there's like 10 million TOSAs, right? Like there's a whole million, lots of titles. Right. So in my district, it, it stands for teacher on special assignment. And in my district, there's a lot of things that go with that, um, helping with educational technology, helping with professional learning, supporting all, a variety of departments as they produce their own professional development. So there, there's hands in a lot of pots. Um, and that kind of helped open the door for me in a sense to go, oh, I am liking this. I'm mm -hmm. liking working with people, working with staff in a different way, working with students in a different way. So it helped my transition to a to a small degree, I would say. It it opened the door a little bit. Yeah, and like I I know you well enough and your the staff that's about to inherit you is incredibly lucky cuz I know that you uh the notion that you weren't already leading from that TOSA position is not true. Like you were doing great leadership things. And actually um, we were talking before the podcast, Kelly Wilkins, she was my deputy superintendent and easily the best leader I've ever had. Just love her to pieces. Totally. I wouldn't even just say change my career, you know, change my life in many ways. Um, when she, when uh, I applied for an assistant principal position, she said to me, uh, I was like talking about, and she's like, hey, when you put your resume together, uh, go look at the leadership standards for our province of Alberta. And what I want you to do is I want you to take those standards and show and give evidence of how you've been meeting those standards from your position as a teacher. And so that to me was like, it was kind of like, uh, you know, this advice, like dress to the job you want. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, yeah. that's what she made me do with my resume is like saying like, hey, mm. I'm already doing this stuff from my position. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sure thing. Right. I'm a sure thing because I'm already doing this, too. So uh, mm -hmm. I, a lot of people, you know, like I think when we think of lead, like a lot of people kind of use the term leadership and administration synonymously. But the reality is that you are doing incredible leadership, which is why you're in that position and which is why I know you should be successful. And so I am like, I'm pumped for you, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm more pumped for your staff. I think they're going to be. I oh, think they're, thank yeah, you. They're gonna, uh, that's I, that's I really, accomplishment. I can't wait to learn from this next chapter mm -hmm. and and grow and grow with it and i i think that is something that fuels me is you know i stick with things for mm -hmm. a decent amount of time for anybody that knows me like i i am someone that likes to watch the processes grow like i chaired that design thinking pathway that i was with for over 10 years i had been with that watching it and so what i found was with each new step i had to uh, one of the things I had talked about in that TEDx talk was learning to to let go, to kind of clear my mm -hmm. plate of certain things to let new things in. And that was a piece that I'm like, all right, what am I willing to let go for this next thing to begin? So I finally said, like, I, I have to let go of my that lead pathway that has been my true baby for the last mm -hmm. 10 years. And it's going to be okay. Like I watched somebody else. I helped my student teacher teach in it this last year. I'm going to support the next person and train them well and like support them through that journey. I wrote a whole, I haven't talked about it yet. I haven't shared it on social media, but I wrote a whole letter that I put up um, that I'm going to share soon enough uh, for the next person to my classroom before I knew uh... I was And I just said to the next person who is going to be in this sacred space. And it's a three page, like long thing about all the great things that they're going to be coming into and how I wish them well. And like, that is my hope is that I leave a space better than I began and that I don't ever leave a space with a hole, 
Like I mm-hmm. really want it to be that a space doesn't revolve around me, mm-hmm. that I help it to be a space that becomes a great space because I connect with people, I do things and I work in my own way. And so that's that's really what I'm hoping for is to now move into this, this next space that can mm-hmm. be my new home, that I'll learn from it, I'll grow with the people that are there and the staff that are there. And I just, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm super You're excited awesome. and it's been wonderful to have people reaching out with all the support. So well, and, um, and I'll share that letter soon enough. I was well, waiting until it was official. I love it. And so Mary, Mary Lynn Campbell, uh, she was my superintendent for a long time. Great leader. Uh, she said to me when I became principal, and I think you made this up, like you just displayed this is asked me like, Hey, when you take this job, what will your fingerprints be? Like, how will people know you were there? And you talked about that kind of like, what's the, the, you know, like you don't want to leave a hole in that space, but also make sure that you actually continue to develop the fingerprints of the last person that you don't try to wipe them away right away. So, right. Like you want to make your own impact, but also build on what's been done already. So, uh, I am, like I said, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for your staff. I know you're going to do a great job and just, just the, the focus that you have on kids, uh, really meaningful learning is really powerful. Uh, the other thing too, you are actually one of the authors of, because of a teacher. So I'm like really pumped for that. So you, uh, you, you share a really compelling story and maybe we'll talk about that uh, a little bit. I don't know if you're going to use that one in the questions, uh, mm. but, but mm. we'll, we'll see today, but you are a, you are a fantastic writer. Um, I had to like, look at your stuff and then go revamp mine to keep up. Cause you, you're like, you are like a gifted writer. Goodness, I gotta come here more often, George. I feel good. I feel good. Again. Well, I'm not. I'm not. The um, only, I'm not the only one who says that too. Like I've seen a lot of people like aw. commend your work. You know, I know you do. You do some writing for Edutopia, correct? I have. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting because I had never been a person that thought of myself as a writer or put myself out there as a writer. Um, that started to happen more in the last couple of years, where I just said, you know. I have these thoughts in my head. Let me put them to paper. I mean, obviously I had been an English teacher. It's not as though I haven't done writing Mm -hmm. in my lifetime, but I had never said writer next to my name. Mm -hmm. And now I would say that, and I'm pretty proud to say that. Um, But I find that I, um, in the way that perhaps I speak as well and that you speak, that what I like is the ability to say things as as I see them and say Mm -hmm. them as they are. and, and I'm finding that there's a way that I can do that with words that is sometimes different than how you can say it out loud and the way that you can paint a picture with a story mm-hmm. and the way that you can talk through some of these moments and get your thoughts out. For me, it's really cathartic to put it to paper. And so I didn't really realize that until there were some of these big moments of transition when mm-hmm. I moved into my TOSA role um, from being in the classroom and was still transitioning and balancing both. Uh, I needed a space to get some of those thoughts out. And that's really what propelled me to start to write was going, oh, I did this in my classroom. Maybe this would benefit others if I write it down. But for right now, it's benefiting me to get it out and have a space that when somebody says, how'd you do that? I can go, oh, I wrote about it here and I already have it written out for you. So it really was self-fulfilling. And I'm really happy, though, that now it's it's become more than that. Um, Yeah. I'm I'm happy that you can find and it I think what I appreciate though is, and maybe this is, maybe I'm a little biased because, you know, we've had conversations is that when I read your stuff, I can hear you reading it to me and it feels like we're having a conversation. Yeah. Right. And I remember years ago, uh, Jimmy Cassis, I pushed him to start blogging. He's written like 85 books now. Uh, and he's like, I don't like writing. I'm like, just write the way you, the way you talk now. That's what people want to hear. And I actually walked out of school, high school, uh, feeling like when I was writing, it was like, something that wasn't me and then and then when i started writing on my own it was like this is how i talk so you know this is what i'm gonna say and i think that's one of the elements of what i love about you so you know all the people are listening uh they can see how accomplished you are uh, all the stuff that you've done uh, in your career and uh the the first question obviously you've inspired so many people when you look back at your maybe your career as a student uh who's a teacher that inspired you and, and and why why is that Gosh, this is the easiest question for me to answer because I am still connected to him today. And, you know, it was funny when you asked about which section in the book I would want to write. 
and I didn't get to write in this section. So I am super happy to get okay. to give him a shout out here. His name is Doug Yance. Doug Yance. Because sure he he's probably listening, uh, so he gets a special air horn, he, he right? Probably, he probably will. We're still connected. He Good. still writes me every year right before my birthday to wish me a happy I love birthday. It. Like, I love it. he is, I, I, I love this man. Um, but it was weird that I just said his first name because I still, in all of my time, <laughs> since I had him in sixth grade, I still call him Mr. Yawns. Yeah. And every now, you know, he writes me mess and messenger on Facebook. Like, you need to call me Doug at this point. I'm like, I really can't, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Yawns. Like, I really can't. So um, one of the things that I absolutely loved about him was the way that he just, he bled pure joy with us. I mean, he was like, I, I can say he was a hard ass. Like, he mm -hmm. was a really, like, People wouldn't, you would not go against Mr. Yance, but he had a presence in a space that was magical. Like, I don't mm -hmm. even know how to describe it. You walked into his room and you felt special to be there. And that is something that I, I value so deeply. Like he made every kid, every student feel special about being in his class and that we would work our way up to doing these really cool mm. things that I'm sure he did every year, but you would never know that, right? right? So like the idea that on a, on a, if we work, if we did a great job all week long, we would get to play kickball on Friday. I still remember like mm. how much everybody wanted to be able to do that. And you get to go on this field that nobody else in the school <laughs> could touch, you know? Love it. you know, it was all those pieces. And he, he went to UCLA and you knew it from the second you walked in. Everything in his room was UCLA. When you did leg lifts, he'd make you go UCLA <laughs> as you did the leg lifts. And if you were a kid in Mr. Yance's class, we would still talk about that. And I still remember like the story that I would have written was how I came back to him when I got into UC Berkeley and I came back to him. He was one of the first people that I told that I like where I got into school. Yeah. And I remember my sentence to tell him that I where I went to school was, I'm sorry, Mr. Yance. I'm not going to UCLA. I got into UC Berkeley. And he was like, you don't need to apologize. I'm so happy, you know? But I, I knew all the kids in that sixth grade class, we all came back to tell him where we were going to school and what we were doing. Like every person we planned out needing to come and tell him. And I just think he instilled this care, this love, this love of deep learning um, at the same time as valuing having fun with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was all weaved right. in together. And every moment I just, I remember like, and he led us doing like plays and shows. And mm -hmm. so he tapped into all parts of us. Um, and right now, I mean, he went on to, he won, I don't know how many times of the year he won teacher of the year. I mean, how many times he won right. it. Um, all, all well-deserved. He is now quote retired, but he teaches his own school with his own grandchildren. Like I said, okay, if, if I was his, like, kid, if I was, like, having his grandchildren, I understand why. I would send all of yeah. my kids to his school all the time. Like, and they are so lucky. And he just, he is an amazing, amazing person, human being, teacher. So I can't shout his name enough. Well, Yay, Mr. Yance. Mr. Yance, shout out. <laughs> I, know you, I know you listen, so I know you like the horn there. So uh, that, 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 to me... I think a lot of people kind of see the the fun teacher and you know the the teacher that does deep learning as two separate things, but I think that they are totally connected because it's way easier to do hard work and to really oh, you yeah. know do in depth learning where you struggle when you know that you can. It, there's some there's some joy and purpose and value in that too, right? So that's beautiful. He was that person that would just he would come around and he'd go, "I know you can do better than that," mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. he didn't let you get away with. Right that is good enough that what yeah. it was never good enough, right and um and when he said it like i heard it and i still can hear it now at 41 like i still can Love hear it. him saying that stuff to me you know and so it's, it's good I, I, for, for, for my own kids right like i push my kids and i have high expectations but i want them to you know enjoy every single day so i love that now next question this is going to be yeah. it's going to be an interesting one because you're about to you know go into admin right so yeah. We're yeah. gonna, we're gonna. So when you're talking about admin, uh, maybe as a kid, maybe as a, a staff member, like who's an administrator that inspired you and why? Okay, so I'm gonna name someone who is my current associate superintendent right now. Oh, um, okay. Doctor Carrie Bosco. I have to give her a shout out. 
Are you, yeah, I like how you're pausing when you say the word shout out. So you obviously watch the podcast because this you like. I have to give her a shout out. I know what you're gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'll take we, we gotta I'll take wait it. for the sound. I'll I was cue. Que- I'm queuing you up, Tori. I got. I got but, the um, button ready. But okay, perfect. Well, she deserves all of it. But okay. she, um, she recently earned her doctorate, so it felt really good to get to say Dr. Carrie Bosco. So congratulations, uh, Dr. Carrie Bosco. Dr. Carrie Bosco. Congratulations. And Yes, congratulations. And she and her husband both earned their doctorates at the same time. Um, and so there were t- there are now two Dr. Boscos. But she she was the person who was the shoulder tapper for me to say, have you thought about getting your admin credential? Mm. And she was that person who said, I see something in you. Um, she The piece that I really value about her is the way that she entrusts people to do the leadership that they need to do. And so um, she has been the person who has given me projects that I hadn't thought about and entrusted me to go and do them to then see like, oh, I actually do really like this. Um, And I felt comfortable enough to ask her questions on things. And she's slowly taken the training wheels off. I also saw, I mean, she transitioned from, she was leading a team at the, at our school site and watching her transition and the way that she has um, been able to really own her own leadership journey. I really have valued kind of watching her do that. Um, And she's had a lot, ours is a smaller, by smaller, I just mean we're a two high school district. So not small in terms of number of students, but smaller in terms of number of schools. Uh, And Mm. And so it means that you have your hands in a lot of pots and she has to do a great deal. Um, and I'm really appreciative of the the way that she is still able to be personal, connect with me, mm-hmm. the fact that she would take the time to do that, to sit with me and that she has along this, like in her own right, she's doing her own journey that is inspiring. And then she'll say to me, you know, I think you should go have a conversation with this person. It would be really valuable. Like the fact that I, Without her saying I'm coaching mm-hmm. you, she's coaching me. Right. And um, and those are pieces that for, for me with people in leadership, when I think about people that I really value, I want to have leaders that help to build other leaders mm-hmm. and help to support other people in their leadership journeys and in being teacher leaders and in being leaders in their classroom. And I think that she does that magnificently. So, uh, there's, Dr. There's... Carrie Bosco, I appreciate you. <laughs> Carrie Bosco, doc, Dr. Carrie Bosco. And uh, yeah. there's two things that really, I think are really important points that you made there. The first one is you're, you're seeing her currently learn and not, and I'm not just talking obviously in the doctor program or doctoral program. I don't know yeah. specifically, but like in all elements of the work that she does, which sets a tone. And I like watch sometimes, uh, like a superintendent or a principal saying like, Hey, we're all learners. We're all doing this. And they'll start a PD day. And then the second they're done talking, they're out, they're out of the room. Cause right. you know, they got important stuff to do. And you know, you all, you all got to learn this too. Um, I, there's actually, um, I think it was Andrew Houlihan, as uh, a superintendent in UCPS in North Carolina superintendent. And he actually was like live tweeting stuff. I was saying in our session, he was like connecting with leaders during that. And I told him, I said, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate um, that you're, cause then people see your learning and now it puts an onus on it. Cause then that, then you, mm-hmm. then you become the principal at the school that is in the sessions with your staff and learning alongside, not saying like, Hey, this is not my job anymore. You're like, no, this, this mm-hmm. literally is the mm-hmm. role. But the second thing too, uh, that I think is so important and, um, and I, which is why I know you're going to be so great at this too, is that you build relationships so you can push people. A lot of times people see it as a really fluffy mm-hmm. thing. Right? Like, oh, like you just want to be liked by everybody. No, I want people to know that I got their back, that I'm supporting them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're going to have some tough conversations. Sometimes I'm going to say things that you're not really excited about, but you know that they're, it's out of a place of, of growth. They, they see, uh, sometimes I think a lot of times we get caught up in ourselves, uh, in the sense that, uh, we only see things from, you know, a perspective, not maybe looking outside of ourselves. And that's, you know, great leaders, uh, and Dr. Carrie Bosco, right? 
All right, this is the last one, and I don't want you to. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like. I don't want to give you away too much because this is the this is the one you okay. answered uh, in the book, and I'll tell you, it is a very powerful chapter. It's very uh, awesome to read. I cannot wait for people to get a hold of you, this book and your chapter uh, in it. But if you could go back to your first year of teaching, and like I actually. I'm curious because you, when you wrote this, you weren't you weren't going into admin. I wonder if anything has changed since you wrote this, right? Um, but what advice would you give yourself? Gosh, I had so many key pieces, so I've got I've got to <laughs> narrow it down to one. It's so funny because I have it open here, just going right. like, mm, "Is that the story I want to tell? Where do I go with this?" Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I would say one of the one of the pieces that I think has really when I look back, when now that I've had a, I've had multiple student teachers, and this last student teacher, gosh, watching her, she's about to start her first her first year at her first school mm -hmm. that is in her own classroom, right? And so I've had many moments of her messaging me. It's only been now since March that we've been able to actually meet each other and see each other in person. But prior to this, we had never met in person. We were just meeting virtually. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of moments of advice and ironically enough her uh her name is stephanie also stephanie todd was my student teacher this last okay. year so here i am like being asked to write a chapter about like what advice would you give mm. to your first year teacher self and i'm seeing this person who i see so much of my first year teacher self in her right and like so i'm having this crazy like 360 moment as i'm writing this chapter but some of the things that i have talked to her a lot about are really just owning who you are and being confident in that. And that, that that for me was the hardest thing in the beginning and having the confidence to say when I don't know something and ask people for help when I needed help because I figured everybody around me already knew everything. So I had lots of those moments, whether it be at my first school or my next school where I thought that people already knew what was going on. And when I finally unpacked the layers, I realized that nobody knows. Everybody's just figuring it out right. as they go along, but some people fake it a little better um, and are, or they are, aren't willing to say it. But I just needed to be confident enough to turn to that person next to me and go, okay, how do you do this? And can we talk it through? And can we work together on it? And as I've become more confident in myself, I've been willing to collaborate with more people mm -hmm. and open myself up because collaboration means you open up, you open up and like let the world in on the way that you're doing stuff. Right. And sometimes that's scary, you know, scary to be judged, scary to worry, but I, I've become a much better person for it. And so being willing to share, but willing to listen and willing to ask right. that asking that asking for help has served me well in so many ways, but I wish I didn't wait seven years to start to ask for help from people. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to put yeah. you on the spot. I'm throwing in a fourth question. Yeah. This is the, yeah. so you had an intern in your class named Stephanie this year and yes. you are the expert. She's learning from you. What did you learn from your intern? Oh my gosh. I learned so much from her. All right. I well, learned so much. What did you learn? Okay. Give me the one, the, okay. the one big thing. Um, okay. Let me, let me think through some of the best stuff. Okay. I have so many, so many, too many. Okay. Um, one of the things that I really loved that she did even was the way that she would design the mm -hmm. lesson and mm -hmm. the day and the way that she would thoughtfully put together. I mean, in this year of crazy, can you imagine this was her I first can't, year? I can't even year. imagine. Like During COVID and we had to be all virtual right. at the wow. start. And then she transitioned to in-person. So managing mm, that, wow. um, so I would say there were two parts, the way that she put together her, her lessons, the way that she incorporated her visuals um, while ensuring that she was leaving time to check in with students individually, it was brilliant. She would always weave in pieces at the start that would allow students to do that kind of like mm. the, the beginning stuff while then she could do that, the, the check-in. And um, even the way that she incorporated herself into things and fun gifts and other pieces that just made it her. Right. Um, and she wasn't afraid to bring in hard topics and conversations that I think in my first year, I don't know that I would have right. um, like had the onus to do that. Mm -hmm. She, when, when we had crazy stuff happening in our country, in our nation, things that were making people scared. Mm -hmm. She was willing to have those conversations and just say, this is a space and I'm here if you need to talk. And 
my goodness, I don't know that at like 22, right. 23, I would have been able to do that. Um, when we went back into the classroom, I think one of the biggest things that she was asking me for help with was the stuff that is a normal first year teacher question around like how to how to handle students in a physical space, right? right. And one of the things that I remember her saying thank you to me about that I think she then learned and then I saw her doing it and it was amazing was uh, so I decided like when it was her final days in the classroom that I wanted to sit in there, even though it was her space. So I sat in and then there were, you know, students being students, right? Like right. they haven't seen each other in a long time. They're, they're like getting all excited about being in a space and talking. And I could see her getting nervous. Like I could see her getting nervous. Like, do I have control quote, mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. room? You know? And I like remember just looking at her and all I did was I just went over and I just like sat at that table with the kids. Mm -hmm. Like I just sat down with them. And then when she would ask a question, like I started to just like talk to them with around the question and we had really good conversation around it. And after she said to me, thank you so much for sitting with them. I said, you know what? They didn't really need me. They were excited to be together. Mm -hmm. I said, but I wanted to hear what they were talking about. I wanted to know what was going on. It was so great. And I sat down and I just asked them. And she said, after that, that's what she started to do. She stopped like standing at like a space in the room. And we talked about how, how to like navigate the space and sit down and be with groups. And when I saw her do that, I was like, oh, she's got this. She's got that's this. awesome. You know, do you know, you know, so I'm listening. First of all, shout out to all the new teachers that had their first yeah. year. And to all the interns that went through this year and, and whether they stuck with it or not, shout out. Right? So as I'm listening to your story, just listening to you here is that you are probably her Dr. Carey, right? Like that's kind of cool. Like to listen to that, the same thing that the way you talk about her, the way you, you know, challenge people, you know, but the, you, you got them is really cool to hear. So, um, it was awesome to have you on the podcast. It was awesome to sit down and talk with you. Uh, I usually play an outro song, but it's a, you know, it's a certain day of the week. And then I'm going to do a little something special, even though I'm going to get a copyright strike on YouTube. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down Friday. Everybody so that's the outro. Come on. Little Rebecca Black to end the week. So thanks to everyone for listening. Steph, it was awesome to talk to you. And uh, I cannot wait for people to read your chapter in the book. So thanks, everybody, for listening. I cannot wait for because of the teacher to come out. All right. All right. Have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Thank you.